German mercantile raiders, also designated auxiliary cruisers because of their armament, operated throughout the Indian Ocean, the South Atlantic, and the Far East during the Second World War. The eleven converted merchantmen deployed as raiders by the Kriegsmarine netted a large tally of Allied ships and posed a very considerable threat until they themselves were ultimately hunted down and destroyed. Tactically, the operations of each raider depended upon the personality of the respective captain and had a direct bearing upon the survivability of each ship as Allied anti-surface forces grew in strength and technological aids as the war progressed. One of the most notable raiders was the Michel, under the command of Knight's Crossholder Corvettenkapitän Helmut von Ruchtischel. The vessel was originally constructed as a freighter, built by Danziger Werft in 1939, and operated by the Gdynia American shipping line as the Bielsko. Seized in Danzig at the outbreak of war, she was renamed the Michel, and taken into auxiliary service with the German Navy. The 10,900-ton ship was converted to carry two Arado AR-196A3 spotter floatplanes, and was fitted with six 5.9-inch guns and a single 4.1-inch gun, as well as secondary armament consisting of four 37 and four 20mm anti-aircraft guns. She also mounted six torpedo tubes, making for a formidable vessel crewed by 400 men. The Michel's first cruise was a massive success, and she was the eighth such raider to leave Germany. Departing from Kiel on the 9th of March 1942, on the 19th of April she sank her first ship, the British tanker Patella, for 7,500 tonnes, and destroyed another tanker, the American Connecticut, for 8,500 tonnes on the 22nd of April. On May Day, after chasing, engaging and failing to sink the Menelaus, which ended up being the only merchant ship to survive an encounter with a German merchant raider during the war, perhaps indicating the effectiveness of this form of merchant ship attrition and the professionalism of the raider's skippers, an embarrassed von Ruchtischel decided in future only to attack Allied shipping at night. The technique he developed was to approach his prey from the darkest part of the horizon, and with gun crews standing by at action stations, have a star shell sent up to illuminate the target. The gunners would then blast the unfortunate merchantman out of the water, although on several occasions the merchant vessel would immediately surrender to allow the crew time to take to the boats. On board the Michel was a small, high-powered Moser launch named the Ezal, an early version of what has subsequently developed into the Rib, the rigid inflatable boat. It was used to stalk prey ahead of the main vessel. It was armed with torpedoes, so could attack merchant ships independently of the mother ship, and could also be armed with depth chargers, providing the Michel with a formidable anti-submarine escort. The Michel's cruise through the South Atlantic was considerably more successful than most U-boats would ever manage. On the 20th of May, von Ruchtischel sank the 4,000-ton Norwegian freighter Kattegat, and in June sank two more freighters, the American George Clymer for just over 7,000 tons on the 7th of June, and the British Lyle Park for just over 5,000 tons on the 11th of June. July proved to be even more fruitful hunting. On the 15th, the Michel sank the 8,000-ton British passenger ship Gloucester Castle, and the next day bagged the 8,000-ton American tanker William F. Humphrey. On the 17th, the 8,000-ton Norwegian tanker Aramis was sent to the bottom. Because of the size and space aboard the Michel, many of the merchant crews from the sinking of these vessels were rescued and made prisoners of war aboard the raider. On the 14th of August, the Michel sank the 8,000-ton British freighter Aribistan, and on the 10th of September, the 7,000-ton British merchantman Empire Dawn. The next day witnessed the destruction of another American freighter, the American leader, for nearly 7,000 tons. 
The British freighter Reynolds, just over 5,000 tonnes, was dispatched to the deep on the 2nd of November, and just prior to entering the Indian Ocean, the Michel caught and sank her 13th ship of the cruise, the 6,000-tonne American freighter Sawakla, on the 29th of November. Steaming into the Indian Ocean, the Michel encountered the Greek freighter Eugenie Livanos for nearly 5,000 tonnes on the 8th of December and sank her. Christmas 1942 gave way to the fourth year of the war, and the Michel sank the 7,000-tonne British freighter Empire March on the 2nd of January 1943. She then steamed back into the South Atlantic to prepare for the journey home. At this stage, von Ruchtischel was awarded the oak leaves to his Knight's Cross. In need of fuel and provisions, and carrying a large group of prisoners, the Michel needed to head to France, but German naval command realised that because of increased and more effective Allied sea and air activity against German surface vessels and U-boats throughout the North Atlantic and the Bay of Biscay, it was unlikely that the Michel would actually survive a return journey. Accordingly, the Michel was ordered to Japan for refuelling and supplies, a decision that would have struck cold fear and dread into the hearts of the British, American, Norwegian and Greek prisoners on board the raider. The Michel made her way to Malaya, first dropping anchor at Tangjang Priok, where the Japanese had laid on a welcome for the crew. The unfortunate civilian prisoners of war were handed over to the Japanese authorities when the ship arrived at Singapore, before arriving at Kobe, Japan, on the 2nd of March. The raider was to spend two months refitting and resting at Kobe and Yokohama, but the exertions of command had proved too much for von Ruchtischel, who left the ship too exhausted to continue. Corvetten Kapitän Gunther Gumprich, formerly the commander of the raider Thor, replaced him. The Michel eased herself out of a bustling Yokohama harbour on the 1st of May 1943 to begin her second raiding cruise into the Indian Ocean. Off the west coast of Australia, Gumprich encountered and sank the 7,715-tonne Norwegian freighter Hoch Silbermann on the 15th of June and two days later claimed another Norwegian vessel, the 10,000-ton tanker Fern Castle. From this position, the Michel steamed into the Pacific Ocean to hunt, encountering virtually nothing for three months. On the 11th of September, the Michel was near Easter Island and preparing to return to Japan for further supplies, when she found and sank her final victim, the 10,000-ton Norwegian tanker India. The next vessel she encountered was no lumbering freighter, and when the Michel was only a hundred miles off the coast of Japan, the American submarine USS Tarpon torpedoed her. Struck by three torpedoes, she sank, taking Gumprich and around 200 crew with her. Subsequently, Berlin complained to Tokyo that an insufficient effort was made by the Japanese authorities to locate and rescue the 200 men who had survived the sinking. Approximately half of these men eventually made it to shore, with the rest succumbing to exhaustion, wounds or the ever-present sharks. However, ships like the Michel demonstrated the huge damage just a few raiders could wreak upon Allied merchant shipping, and how widely such craft could operate. It also demonstrates that German-Japanese naval cooperation could be extremely effective in keeping vessels such as the raiders operational and potent far from their bases in Europe, enabling the Kriegsmarine to maintain a global reach, if on a limited scale. Many thanks for listening. Please visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. 